Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to the Virtual Publisher Workshop. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit down and, and look at some of the content that we're going to present. Um, with me, I have Tara McCrillis and Maria Blondo from Green Gale Publishing. They are going to answer some questions about their experiences with Virtual Publisher today. They'll talk a little bit about the transition into the software and some of the experiences they've had since they've began using it. Um, Tara, Maria, thank you both for joining us. Um, to start out, Tell us a little bit about your publication. Um, you know, you guys, the number of issues that you produce, the number of titles that you work with. Tell us a little bit about that, and um, and how you guys do business. Thank you. Um, this is Maria Blondeau. So we are a publisher that uh, currently produces eleven different city regional titles. They vary in frequency. So we have some titles that are weekly during the summer months, but most of our titles are bi-monthly or ten times a year. We're currently spread out all over the country, so having a tool like Virtual Publisher is very helpful for the transparency that we need with all of our outer offices because we have editors in each market that uh, write for each of the issues that uh, we have. So um, it, it, I think that's about it. So you mentioned you know, the fact that you guys are spread all over the place. Um, and, and to that point, Virtual Publisher being cloud-based, that was an advantage for you guys when you moved into it, correct? Because you didn't have to install things on computers in that nature. You could just access it from the web, right? Absolutely. So Virtual Publisher gives us that transparency. So we're working with editors in the local markets um, in real time. So we could be looking at a screen, look at the revisions side by side. And actually, this year, we've just gone international. We produced our first book for a property in Macau, and this tool has been instrumental in helping us work with them just with the um, the view, the link that we've been able to send them to review the magazine and deal with any changes that occur and be able to look at the revisions side by side. So talk about sharing the publication. You mentioned you know you guys have so many outlets all over the world now that you've gone international, and, and congratulations on that. Are there tools within Virtual Publisher that help you and, and help that sharing process when you're trying to show the book plan during you know the construction of each issue or, or when it's finalized? Actually, we used uh, Magazine Viewer is what we used this time okay. around. That was very helpful. That gave the people that we wanted to see the issue. They didn't actually have to log into Virtual Publisher. They were able to. We were able to get the link directly out email it to the people we wanted to review it, and then if we made changes, it updated in real time. So as they're reviewing it and they wanted a change made, we could make it and they could view it in the link that we sent them. That's awesome. So with that, you guys are able to share the publication. You know, It's cloud-based so everyone can log in. What were you using before Virtual Publisher? <laughs> we were just using servers and transferring PDFs and files back and forth. Okay. What manual processes was Virtual Publisher able to streamline for you guys after you implemented it? The correction process before we would have, you know, they would have to make notes on PDFs. Now everything is logged within the system and tracked within VP. So when an editor would get sent a page, they'd get a PDF. And a lot of times they, they wouldn't take the time to actually make the notes on the PDF and email it back. They would either call their ME who would have to handwrite them all or they would send them in an email so they'd have to decipher them on the copy edit side as to what changes they wanted to make. Now Virtual Publisher allows them to tag the change, put the change directly in, and it travels along with the, the PDF. So we have the history of those changes as well, which is very important. It's not notes anymore. We use tasks now, correct? Correct. Correct. Sorry. We use notes in the beginning, but the task function has uh, replaced that for us. So from a communication standpoint, you guys have been able to be more effective because there's not necessarily that game of chase going on with trying to find the right information from the right people. Absolutely. And we also had, you know, when we were in New York, we, were, we have a centralized edit and art team that's located in New York City. And they would be passing job jackets around, so they had paper that they would be making notes on, and then they would just traffic that folder around. And losing that folder was a common occurrence and having to track it down and find out where it was. And then the revisions would get lost. People you know, would lose the, the paper, and then you'd have to start over from the beginning. So having everything in the system that's cloud-based allows us to keep better track of things. And if there's a question on a certain page, you see who it's assigned to, and you're able to go directly to that person to discuss it. So that, that's, that's awesome. been a huge time saver for us. So talk about your revision cycle a little bit. You mentioned that you know, that specific function was something that, that benefited you guys. Um, what about the way that Virtual Publisher manages revisions is helpful for you? 
Well, I mean, just uh, the most recent example I have in my mind is the, the China project that we just recently um, produced. We were working with a translator overseas. So, and obviously we don't have, well, we don't have people on site that speak Chinese. And we were doing the book in two different versions. We were doing it in simplified and traditional. And a lot of times what was happening is there was confusion about what changes need to be made and did we make changes to that page. And when you can't read it, it's really important that you're able to look in and zoom side by side to see if the characters actually are different. So we were able to use that uh, revision tool and that having the ability to see the progression of the PDF too, because it's not just one. I mean, you could you know have seven different PDFs and look at the same space all side by side and see where the change occurred and and what's happened, you know, every step of the way. So that overhead view and being able to see those side by side ended up also a communication tool, like you said, being that you don't have a, any people on site in Macau, which is it's fantastic that you guys have, have branched out there. Um, tell me about some of your favorite features. So, um, you know, I know that you mentioned run lists is, is something I think in, in speaking before was something that you found helpful. Um, explain that to me and then other features that you found beneficial. Well, I, I can tell you about the run list, but then I'll let Tara, who works in the system on a regular basis, speak more to her favorite um, parts of it. But the run list was something that we um, implemented into Virtual Publisher at the last year, I believe. So, and that was an Excel document that all the MEs managed on a server. And the run list being a part of Virtual Publisher has just been a tremendous help because what you guys did is you allowed us to evolve it, to put the budgets on there, so you have a complete picture of an issue from an editorial standpoint, having the run list in the system, and everybody's looking at the same document. When you work off an Excel document, you know different people can see it in different you know stages, and it's not always the most current. But having the, the run list within VP, having the updates made within that um, within the system, allows everybody to be working off the same timeline, the same budget. Everything is you know, it's just transparent. That's awesome. And here's Tara. Um, I would say that one of the favorite, my favorite things is on the editorial side, at any given time, you can see who has the page. So as we move throughout our cycle, we assign it to different people on the team. And you can see if anything's getting stalled with one specific person. You can see what changes have been addressed because on the task function functions, we have a complete button. So once it gets taken care of, they press the complete so you can see what's still outstanding on any page. From the ad perspective, I just like the, bil the ability to see the ads creative as soon as it comes in. I also like to see that advertisers are uploading ads before we have contracts, which helps me plan book sizes a little more effectively because I have an idea of what, what kind of contracts are still hanging out there, even if I haven't heard from my salespeople yet. It's amazing. That's awesome. It sounds like you guys. Are... I actually have one more thing that I think has been great for us too, and Tara may disagree because it's a burden and a, and a benefit. But the fact that Virtual Publisher is linked with our billing system and the contracts flow over into Virtual Publisher, so there's never the risk of not having the paperwork that we need to have, and that that client is going to be billed and an ad getting placed without those best without the the invoice or the system knowing that it's there so we charge the client. I mean before it was they were disconnected so we could technically put an ad in the book and not necessarily have it in the billing system but now that's a seamless process so that's a from an operational standpoint that's a, a big benefit for us. And the vice versa of that we could have had a booked ad that never got artwork that never made it into the book because there was no visual to say hey we're missing a piece of artwork here. So it sounds like with each of the, each of the features that, that you've discussed, there's kind of an overall theme of accountability. And you can always see what's going on, um, and there's almost a system of checks and balances that alerts you if something is missing, if something's out of place, and you're also able to see you know, what's been done on from a re revision standpoint or, as you've just said, um, from a billing standpoint if you have something going in. So the system has provided a sense of accountability across multiple departments, it sounds like. It has, but it's also helped us improve our workflow and streamline things by identifying bottlenecks. I mean, that was that was a huge benefit for us, just implementing the system, really seeing where things were being held up in the process. So that was, yes, I mean, everything you said, and in addition to that, just identifying the bottlenecks within our workflow, because it's constantly evolving. 
That's awesome. So the last thing I, I, I want to ask you both before we dive into the actual demo, and, and we'll show specifically some of these features that, that you've discussed with us so people can see those in action, but you've mentioned the benefits that this has provided and the time that it's given back to you. What have you been able to do with that time? Um, and and you know, with that, what benefits have you seen throughout your team and the publication as a result of implementing Virtual Publisher? I mean, honestly, what we've done is, you know, with the time saving, we just, we haven't the need to replace positions. I mean, we used to have a traffic department that was three full-time people, and now it's, in essence, two and a half. You know, we have somebody who steps in and helps as needed. But the biggest part has been our positioning and planning um, group. That used to be three dedicated people that did the mapping and the positioning. Now it's, in essence, one and a half. So... We are just, you know, working more efficiently with less people. So as a result of that, because of the time savings, you guys have seen an increase in, in overall revenue because you've been able to run a leaner system. Yes, and it also allows us to, I mean, uh, allocate resources to our online part of our business, which is continuing to grow as well. So That's amazing. So to your point there, you were able to, to apply focus on growing the publication as opposed to going to this, you know, the issue each week, going to print. You've been able to adopt some some new platforms to, to market on, sell advertising and things like that? Correct. That's awesome. Okay. Well, ladies, thank you so much. Those those questions that, that I've asked, that, that wraps up the Q&A session of what I wanted to ask you. Now, I want to point out to all of our viewers, you'll notice on the toolbar uh, for GoToWebinar that you have the ability to submit questions. Um, so you see that chat platform. If you have questions on what Tara and Maria have just talked about, please feel free to submit those questions at the end. We'll read those off and answer each one of those. Tara and Maria will still be on here to answer questions if you have for them. But again, the GoToWebinar toolbar has that chat function, uh, so you're able to submit those questions there. And please do that if you have questions. I'm going to dive in now to a live demonstration of Virtual Publisher. Tara, Maria, thank you so much. I, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you getting on and sharing your experiences with Virtual Publisher. And again, to all of the attendees, uh, please feel free to ask questions um, if, if they've popped up. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in now uh, to the demonstration of Virtual Publisher. Now, I always start on the Blanchard System webpage because there's a lot of good information here. You're going to hear me reference our solution called Send My Ad a couple times today, which is essentially the sister product of Virtual Publisher. Um, but there's also good information here about the platforms themselves. So if you visit the website, it's just BlanchardSystems.com. You can see information about the features we have. You can watch testimonials from different clients. Um, but it's a great place to grab this information. And again, you'll hear me reference the Send My Ad solution a couple times today. You can find information about that here. Moving in now, though, I want to jump into the actual Virtual Publisher platform. So this is Virtual Publisher, and this is the user interface that you work within. Uh, keep in mind, this is a SaaS-based solution. So as Tara and Maria talked about, a cloud-based solution allows you to log in from anywhere on the web. Uh, if you have a web connection, you can access the software. The benefit there, just as they spoke about, anyone can log in from any location all over the world, but see the same platform. So everyone is accessing the same information. Um, what we're looking at now is the production module. Uh, keep in mind, Virtual Publisher is built off of four main modules, and they can be used independently. Um, there's a budgeting module, a planning module, an assignment module, and a production module. Um, if you're using the production module, the planning module goes along with that, but the other three can be used independently. So keep in mind, as we're rolling through these, they can all be managed and accessed independently. Uh, if you're using one, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to use the other. Uh, I am going to start today uh, in editorial planning. Um, I will switch my book over to my, my planning issue. You can see here that this is the drop down that displays the issues that I have. Uh, but I want to start in this. So in editorial planning, essentially what we have here is a module that allows you to do the planning of your book based on a budget, um, which is something that, that Tara and Maria touched on. Uh, and with this, once you've set up the template with the number of pages, you provide your estimated monthly cost, you have the ability to go back in and modify this as the issue begins production. You don't have to go in and rekey in information or anything of that nature. It's already here, and you can actually link existing editorials to this. If I have editorials that I've already created, I can come in, I can link those to this plan. And again, with this, I'm able to create and manage my editorials with a budget and a plan, and using the template, you don't have to rekey in that information. 
Now, I speak about the editorials, and I want to go into the platform where you can actually create those. So on the left-hand menu, you can see I have my editorial platform. And these are some of the editorials that I've already created for our demo today. Um, we're going to be working with the Beckham editorial quite a bit. When I go into the editorial platform, you can see it starts with all of the metadata associated with this individual editorial. So, you know, I've got things, for instance, the headline, some slug information, the coverage, which you can see here, it's actually three and a half pages. Um, flow type, whether it's coverage based or auto flow. We'll see a live example of that in a bit when we're actually putting the book together, but this dictates whether or not ads can be submitted let's say between pages one and two of this editorial and the editorial automatically moves over. Um, which issue or, or issues, plural, this is going to display in. Um, sections, if you want to tell the system that this editorial can only exist within a sp specific section, you can do that here. And you can see I have a, a few to choose from. Uh, color profiles, so if you're working with RGB or CMYK, you can actually tell the system which color profile should be associated with the artwork that's going to go alongside this editorial. Um, and you can assign it to an individual. So keep in mind, when you run through this assignment, Virtual Publisher is going to send an automated notification. So when I create this and I choose an individual from my drop-down to assign this editorial to, they'll receive an email that includes the metadata associated with the editorial, the information that they need to know. Um, you can include additional instructions, which you can see down here. They'll also receive all the coverage information, the word count, if there's a writer associated with it or something of that nature, um, but that notification automatically goes out to the individual that you've assigned it to. Uh, and we'll touch more on assignments in just a moment. Um, going down again, I mentioned the assignments. This one already has an assignment associated with this. So there's text that's been included with that assignment. We'll jump into the assignment platform in just a moment, but you can see you can link assignments with editorials very easily, include the text information, and individuals working within this can see everything that's already been associated. If it's awaiting placement or if it's awaiting materials, Virtual Publisher is going to notify you of that. Now, one of the things that Tara and Maria touched on was the accountability that the, the system held in that it tracks everything. Uh, bringing up this history bar, you can actually see a live example of that. So anytime someone, and you can see, of course, with my demo account, I'm the only individual working with these, but anytime someone makes a change or views an editorial, creates a revision, applies a note, really any action that's established within the system, that's going to be tracked here. And, and you have a, a permanent history of everything that occurs with any individual ad, reservation, or editorial, or anything of that nature. And again, as Tara and Marie indicated for us, it provides complete accountability. Um, anyone can log in, um, depending on their user permissions, to see this information. So you can always know who's working with a specific assignment, what changes that they've made. Now, closing the history tab, I want to move to the center of the screen where we actually have this editorial built. And when we go to the book plan, you'll see when I drag and drop, it's going to essentially copy this over. Now, you can see I have this last page set up as you know a, a half page vertical. If I need to go in and change that to let's say a half page horizontal or something of that nature, I can apply that here. It's a very quick change, very easy to do. I can add pages if need be. Um, there's a number of different functions I can do. I can also apply regionalization. So. If, if you're out there and you're a publisher who does regionalize your book, if your covers are different for different areas of the country or something of that nature, you can manage that within Virtual Publisher. So I can apply regionalization to an individual editorial, uh, artwork for ad reservations or covers and things of that nature. Virtual Publisher will manage every phase of that regionalization. Now, I want to touch on the assignments that we spoke about before. So you can see that this already has an assignment associated with this editorial. If I jump back into my main page and click on the assignments, I can actually see my Beckham assignment. When I access that, you're able to see the text that we saw before was associated with this. Now, our assignment platform, it allows you to create an assignment request for an internal resource for editorials or even an external resource if, if you have individuals that you're contracting to write articles or something of that nature. When you create an assignment, like I said before, the email notification goes out to the user. It gives them those instructions of what they need to do to complete this assignment. Um, now, when it comes to the actual text, you can take, you know, you can take your content from Microsoft Word or a similar platform. You can copy and paste it in here, or you can use the virtual publisher platform to actually type and build this text. Keep in mind, it's going to track your word count, the number of paragraphs, and things of that nature that you have. Um, 
once this content is saved, the notification can go out to your internal team members, uh, usually an editor or someone of that nature. Um, it'll notify them that this assignment has been completed. At that point, they can include instructions to make revisions and things of that nature, and they can go through the changes within that editorial. So each piece can be managed individually as it comes in, and those notifications go automatically out to your team when something's been applied to an assignment. So with this Beckham assignment, um, and again, the history and revisions tab also applies here. So you can see on the bottom of the screen any changes that have been made, any revisions. The system automatically tracks that, and it keeps that um, from a permanent basis, so you can always go back in and see what changes have been made. So let's assume that this assignment has actually been approved, and now we're ready to start building our book plan. So I'll jump back in. This was the page that we started on. So this would be the book plan for my publication. Um, now. Keep in mind, this is very flexible. So if I want to change the size of a section or something of that nature, I can actually drag these toolbars, changing the sizes of the sections. If I want to make my style section bigger, the feature section smaller, I can manage that here. Um, very easy to do, drag and drop those as long as you actually get your mouse on it. Um, but again, it's, it's very flexible. So this is the book plan that I've created. All these advertisements on the right-hand side have come in from Send My Ad. So Send My Ad, some of our attendees might be familiar with that, some might not be. What that is is an ad portal that essentially ensures all the materials you receive are ready for print every time. Uh, it pre-flights the materials that, that are submitted by your advertisers. Um, it, it provides them that portal. If a document they've submitted has issues, it'll warn them of those issues or it can fully reject the ad. It'll tell them how to go about fixing those. But once they've been approved and finalized within Send My Ad, they'll automatically populate inside of this book plan for whichever issue they're meant to appear. So with that comes in the ad reservation information and everything associated with that. So the metadata, all the information behind the ad. Now, let me show you how easy it is to create an ad reservation. So if I want to create a specific reservation, I'll choose reserve ad. It'll bring up my creation screen. I can choose the advertiser that I'm actually creating this for. Headline information, brand, product, very easy to choose. Categories, now this is something that helps with competitive distancing for your ads. So as an example, let's say that um, you have food or restaurants as a category of ad. If you want any ad that falls into that category to exist in a minimum of, let's say, three pages apart or five pages apart within your book plan, you can set up rules that apply to these categories to ensure that when those are placed within the book, they can exist within a certain distance of themselves. So categories is a very useful tool, um, and it's a preventative measure. So you, you won't need to go back and realize, oh, this is too close to one another. Virtual Publisher actually won't allow that placement if it co conflicts with your rule. Um, the booking number, if, you, if you're using an external system that applies a booking number and you want to apply that here for your reference, you can. Uh, I'll select the ad size. From here, it's pulling down a drop-down of, of the ad sizes that pertain specifically to your publication. Um, sections, again, we talked about sections when doing editorials. Same thing here. I can choose a section. It'll only allow me to place this specific advertisement within that section. Um, I can choose my ad types. Um, rate and net cost, those are actually custom fields that I've implemented on my virtual publisher account. So keep in mind, if there's information that pertains specifically to your publication, like rate and net cost, you can create those fields and when making a reservation, those will actually populate. Um, I've got, I can choose which advertiser it belongs to. Uh, my position tags, so position tags and categories are, they're a little bit different, but they kind of fit the same overall theme. With a position tag, I can tell the system that I want this ad to exist, let's say, within the first 25% of the book, or it has to go within the last 50% of the book, anything of that nature. You can customize these to really reflect any type of placement rule that you want. So with a category, it's specific to, to competitive distancing and ads of similar nature. With position tags, it's going to relate specifically of where you want this ad to exist within the book. And in just a second, I will show you a position tag in action, and you can see how Virtual Publisher rejects that action. Again, regionalization we spoke about before with editorials. You can do the same thing with ads. So I go in here, I'll save this, and you can see this reservation immediately pops up on my clipboard. Now I can drag and place this into my publication. So when I'm planning the book, I can reserve that, uh, that specific location for this ad. But that's the creation of an ad reservation. Very easy to do. Um, now, I mentioned uh, using the position tags. The Soho Bay 
advertisement that we have here has a position tag that essentially says this has to go within the first 25% of the book. So you can see when I try to place this toward the end, it tells me that I can't drop this within this 80th percentile and I have to drag and drop this within 25% uh, of the front of the book. If I actually change that, drop it toward the front, you can see it accepts that action. So that's a reference toward those position tags. Um, and again, categories can be used in the same way. If I were to try to drop an ad next to that, um, that fell into the same category, which you can see here, I've got my categories, my sections applied, um, it will prevent that action. So with this, you can see that we've dragged that into the book. Um, now, when I speak about position tags and the categories and things of that nature, I think it's important to keep in mind that all of that can be managed independently by the publisher. So when you have your account set up for Virtual Publisher, of course, we'll include any of those that you'd like us to. As you move along and as the book progresses and, and as you become more and more ingrained in Virtual Publisher, all of those things can be managed by the publisher. You can always go in and edit your ad sizes or create new categories, create new rules and things of that nature. Um, there's, there's never a point where you can't manage something on your own. Um, now, We've created the ad reservation. I'd like to move now into the editorial reservation. So it's really the same process. I can come in here. I can choose reserve editorial. Um, again, you know, at, at this point, I'm entering in all this information. If I'm choosing a writer, choosing how many pages this is, um, assigning it to an individual. Uh, again, I can choose to send that notification out when I assign that to an individual. Um, sections, the flow type, all of that information here. Again, it's the same process as creating the ad. Once I've placed that. You can see I've got my test here that shows up. I can now place that into my book. So creating the reservation for the ads and the editorial, it's a very similar process. Now, when actually placing these into the book, um, I know we've mentioned that we're working with the Beckham editorial. So this one was three and a half pages. You can see here now that it's flowed into the book, including those three and a half pages. I'll do the same thing for um, our four page editorial here, the Miami editorial. Again, when you're dragging and dropping those into the book, they'll automatically flow in. Now. We've talked about what will happen when something is autoflow or coverage based. So, to provide an example for that, and I'll, I'll, I can move this ad now between pages uh, three and four here. You can see it automatically flows over. So, you don't have to manually move those pages. You don't have to take that off of the clipboard and then build each individual page around that. Um, as I place these into the book, and I can do the same thing with a half page ad, it'll automatically flow that editorial around the ads that I'm placing. Um, so, again, Virtual Publisher is very interactive. Um, and it's quite simple when you drag and drop these into place in the book, they automatically reflect the changes that should be made. Now, you can see how easy it is to drag and drop editorials, and, and we've gone over creating the reservations. Um, dragging and dropping the ads on top of the editorials, as I mentioned, that's going to be dependent on whether it's autoflow or coverage space. Um, you can independently move these pages around, so if I want to drag this and move it to a different area of the book, I can do that. Very easy, as I mentioned, um, Virtual Publisher allows for that flexibility. So the last thing I want to show on the planning phase before we jump into the production would be the snippet feature. And I think this Miami editorial built in with these ads is a good example of that. So if, if I have this, let's call it a signature, built within my book, I can actually use the snippet feature to create this as a single entity. So when I create this as a snippet and I accidentally replace that back into my editorials, forgive me, I am uh, using a touchpad as opposed to a mouse today and that can create a couple issues for me. But what I want to do, I'll access the snippets. Now I just select everything here onto my clipboard and I can drag and drop this into the snippet feature. So now I've taken those individual seven items and I can move that in the book now as a group as opposed to moving them individually. So if I want to replace that, it keeps the integrity of that entire signature intact. I can now take that and move it freely without the book. I think it's a great feature. Now I'm using a relatively small book here. Mine's only 32 pages. With a large book that can be really beneficial because you have the ability to save those snippets and move them independently around the book. So that's the last feature on the planning phase. At this point, we would assume that we're finished with our planning and we would actually promote this to the production phase. So that's an action. I would come in here, promote this plan to production, and then I'll be working with high res files. So let's assume that I've done that and I'll go ahead and jump into um, my production workflow. Now, with this, this is essentially a completed book, right? There are a few things left to do that we'll jump into in a second, like merging pages and things of that nature. Um, but with this, you know, I've got a number of different things that I can accomplish from the production standpoint. Um, 
we mentioned re regionalization earlier. That's one of the things that we can manage here. Um, as I scroll over this cover, you can see uh, the globe icon indicates that this has been regionalized. And I can see I've got two different covers here. Um, one of them has the barcode to go into a newsstand. The other one will be delivered to individual subscribers. Um, but you have the ability to see that here. So with this, one of the things that Maria and Tara talked about was being able to see things side by side, um, being able to see revisions and, and things of that nature. So one thing that I want to do is, is go and actually look what happens when a file is submitted that has an issue or something <clears throat> that didn't necessarily pass the pre-flight test. So I have my ad here. Now when it reaches the pre-flight -pre phase, you can see that Virtual Publisher and Send My Ad, and this is an excellent platform or an excellent example to show the Send My Ad platform. You can see that this ad has warnings. There's additional approval required because of that. Now, if I scroll down, I can see exactly what those warnings are. So this one has a warning specifically for low resolution, and you can see when I scroll over that, it highlights the actual area that's affected. Now, the advantage here for the advertiser, they can access this same platform and they can, they'll receive this warning, it'll tell them what's wrong with the file. If they access the More Info tab, it's going to tell them specifically what's wrong with this and how they can go about fixing it. So, again, the idea behind Send My Ad and, and what we're seeing here is a portion of that platform, <coughs> excuse me, is the ability to coach your advertisers into submitting these perfect files. So, once they've done this, they can come in and see, okay, what does it mean the resolution is low? How can I go about fixing that? What does my resolution need to be? So for any of those files that have an issue, keep in mind you can set this up to apply a warning to the advertiser that says, hey, you know, this has an issue. We can accept it, but keep in mind this issue is in place. Or you can apply them with a rejection that says, you know, we can't accept this file. These individual things need to be corrected before this is able to be placed within our book. So being able to see this and communicate with your advertisers um, is it's great. And again, the history tab is here as well. So as revisions come in, people view this, if they make changes within the system, you'll always be able to see that virtual publisher and send my ad keep uh, a permanent history for complete accountability there. So that gives you an example of, of what happens when a file is submitted from an advertiser that may have some issues. Now, I want to talk a moment about the revision cycle. So we talked about being able to reject files or, or warn files. When a revision takes place, one of the benefits that Tara and Maria spoke about was seeing that revision side by side. Now with this, I access, this is part of our Beckham editorial, right? So this is the artwork that's been applied to it. Here I have my first revision that's been applied. Now I can click down here on these thumbnails and I can view a side by side view of the file before the revision took place. So if someone comes in, and you can see a note has been placed on this individual uh, artwork. It tells me to crop the surrounding areas. Uh, that note was made, a notification went out, the revision took place, and now we're able to see the revision side by side with the original document. And this is one of the features, again, that Tara and Maria spoke about. Um, being able to see this, it's improving the communication because of that, and I apologize, I've selected off both of mine now. Um, but anytime a revision takes place, you'll be able to track that. So if there were seven, eight, nine revisions, those would all display here as a thumbnail. And again, you can view those side by side. Now, the actual workflow for placing a revision or requesting a revision um, is quite simple. When I come down here to our Miami editorial that we worked with before, here we had a note that was placed on this specific editorial asking for a text change. Now, it's interesting because Tara and Maria spoke about um, how they've branched out to Macau, and um, with the language, they have to be able to see um, individual text characters and things of that nature, and they're able to zoom in and, and manage that. I think this is a good example that represents that. So the note was made here um, to change the title to New Era, New Miami, and now we can see the revision that's taken place. Um, to do this, to essentially create a revision, what I would do is come in, I would apply the note to a specific file, I would then reject that file. When I apply the note and reject a file, you can set up notifications that automatically go out to the appropriate team members, telling them that the rejection has taken place. It includes that note within the automated notification that they get, and at that point, they can go in and begin making those changes. And again, as Tara and Maria said, you can look at those side by side, especially with something like text, and you can see the changes that have been made. Um, so that gives you an idea of how you go about managing that revision workflow by going in, rejecting the file, applying the note, um, and the correct individuals are then notified. 
Now, with this, we talk about you know the the revision cycles and things of that nature, and we talk about merging editorial and creative content. The InDesign plugin is something that I want to touch on. Um, we didn't touch on that in our Q and A with Tara and Maria, but the InDesign plugin allows you to manage your editorials and the artwork. Um, coinciding with virtual publishers. So I'm going to open up a, a short slide so that shows us essentially that plugin in action. Now with this, keep in mind it's a two-way form of communication. So I use my same login that I have with virtual publisher to log in and access the virtual or the, the InDesign plugin. Um, it's a two-way form of communication. So information can be sent from virtual publisher into the InDesign Plugin, or excuse me, into the InDesign platform. Information can be sent from the InDesign platform to Virtual Publisher. Um, now, with this, you can see on my Actions menu here, there's a number of different things that I can do. I can view uh, a specific document within Virtual Publisher. Um, I can create an InDesign document based off of the specifications that I have within Virtual Publisher. So, when we create your account or you create uh, a new publication or an ad size, Keep in mind, you know, the, the trim, the bleed, the safety, all those aspects are tracked within Virtual Publisher. If you want to create a template that's based specifically off of those specifications, you can do that using this plugin. And again, that ensures that that template matches exactly the specifications that you have for that specific ad size. Um, now, when the template is created, those specs are pulled from Virtual Publisher. Um, and again, when I apply the text here and apply this document, I can send that back into Virtual Publisher. If I'm using the assignment platform within Virtual Publisher, I'm able to actually take that, which you can see here, and I can take that assignment from Virtual Publisher and apply it to my InDesign document. So if the text already exists in that one aspect inside of Virtual Publisher, you can grab that and pull it in. Once you've merged that text with the artwork um, that goes alongside the editorial, you can then send that back into Virtual Publisher. So that two-way form of communication really streamlines this process when you're merging these editorials with the artwork that you're using. Um, and again, that information sends both ways. So I think this is a fantastic example of that. Um, you can see once I've used my assignment here, this is actually what we saw earlier in the Virtual Publisher platform. This is the same assignment with the Beckham editorial. I've pulled that text from Virtual Publisher into my InDesign doc. I've merged that with the artwork. My next step would then be to finalize this and send it back into Virtual Publisher. So I wanted to touch on that InDesign plugin. I know that's something that publishers um, use quite often, and um, it can be a large benefit for them. So jumping back in now, I want to reaccess my Virtual Publisher platform. Um, now we're back on the production page, and I want to point out the different views that you have within this production page. So what I'm looking at here would be the default view. If I want to come in, I can look at the status view. This will tell me um, if a page has been completed, which you can see here, if there's um, artwork or finalization that we're waiting, um, or even if the page needs to be merged. So one thing that I can do here, you can actually see this page, this icon indicates that this individual page needs to be merged together. Um, now, forgive me when I access this. I'll click on the whole thing, and I might, I might have already merged this before our demo. Bear with me. Here we go. So click on that icon. It, it brings up this merge page. Now right now these are two specific files. I can merge this with a single click of the mouse. I can do this at any point in production. If we're nearing the end and someone needs to merge things at the last minute or something of that nature, I can actually come in and merge these pages with inside of Virtual Publisher and create a flattened PDF X1A through that. Um, so I speak about transferring that file type and merging those pages um, and the number of views we have. So it brings me to the point of, of automating delivery to the printer. Um, keep in mind, Virtual Publisher will do that for you. And we can automate that delivery in a fashion to where it can group your entire book into one single file and deliver that to your printer. We can deliver individual pages as flattened PDF X1As, or we can deliver it uh, as individual signatures, or the like essentially the snippet feature that we saw earlier. So there's a number of different ways that we do that. But Virtual Publisher does automate delivery to your printer. Um, if they're using a server or something of that nature, um, we're able to communicate with that and, and manage that delivery for you. Now, one of the things that Tara and Maria talked about was a Virtual Publisher giving them the ability to share the book. Um, one way you can do that is by creating a snapshot. So if I have my entire book here that's planned, it doesn't need to be finished. I can be in the middle of production. I can be completely finished with it. I can be at my very beginning stages. But if I create a snapshot of this plan, 
and then I go into my Manage Snapshots platform. I'm able to download this and save it as a file, which I can then share via email or something of that nature. And I can also share an HTML version of this book. If I want to give someone a link that they can go in and click on and view the actual book, you can do that using this Snapshots feature. Now, Again, you can do that at any time at any time during the plan. It doesn't have to be when the book is finished. You can share this with individuals that are outside of your organization that aren't on your team. You can use this to bring the book into a meeting or something of that nature. Um, everyone can access this from their tablet or their Mac, their laptop, anything of that nature. But this gives you the ability to share that book, and, and that's something, again, Tara and Maria touched on. Um, they specifically mentioned using Magazine Viewer, and in just a minute we'll actually jump in and take a look at the Magazine Viewer, which is what they use to primarily share uh, their publication. Um, now, I mentioned being able to manage signatures and, and automating delivery in a fashion. Um, signatures, of course, individual sections of the book um, that contain artwork and editorials and things of that nature. Um, and you can see here I have each of my created signatures for the issue that I'm on. And again, this tells you whether it's complete or not. You can see the artwork and the editorial work that's been applied to these. And I can also access these individual files. So again, if I want to go and see if there's been any notes applied or something of that nature, I can manage each signature as its own individual entity. Um, and, and I'm able to see those at any time in the plan. Again, if it's not completed, as we can see here, the system will alert you of that. Um, another thing that Tara and Maria mentioned were the run lists and, and how that, that was once a manual process for them that was then uh, essentially streamlined by virtual publisher. Accessing the run list, I think this is a phenomenal tool. Now, we can deliver this to your printer so they know what to expect. Um, it takes versioning and regionalization into account. It'll also show them file names, so when they receive the actual book in the end, if it's individual files, they'll be able to compare that to the run list. Um, but again, this is something that, that keeps track of really every aspect of the book as you're planning it. Uh, and again, this run list can be exported out of here and delivered um, so you can share that with individuals on your team. Um, another thing I want to touch on, excuse me, I actually clicked that link, are statistics. So with this, we have a number of different reporting tools that you can use. Um, statistics is a great way to get a snapshot of your book. How many ads do you have in? How many pages is the book? What is that book made up of in regards to editorials and advertisements and things of that nature? This gives you a quick snapshot and you can see as you're building the book or when the book's completed, you can look at these individual statistics. Um, we also have the reporting platform. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of reports here, but you can also create custom reports. If there's information that you don't find within the reporting platform and virtual publisher, you can create a report that pertains specifically to your publication, and you'll be able to track that as you build the book. So again, these are some of the more administrative features, but they can be very beneficial. I specifically wanted to touch on the run list, since that was something that Tara and Maria said benefited them. Um, the last thing that I want to touch on is the magazine viewer. So this is the tool that they said was beneficial in streamlining the communication of the book as it was being built um, and also viewing the book at any time during the plan. So when I jump back into my production book plan, um, the magazine viewer is something that, that really gives you, you the ability to get a feel for the book. How is this actually going to feel in the hands of the reader? Um, how, what does the flow of the book look like as I progress through this? Um, Bear with me while this loads up. My bandwidth is a little slowed down for GoToWebinar, but as I scroll this through this, you can actually see it's going to show us each page of the book, and I can view this as if I was actually holding this book in my hand. So, again, you can share this. You can invite other users, and you can see I have my invite tool here at the bottom. I can invite other users outside of the system to come in and view the book in this fashion. Um, I can also go through and scroll through the entire book using the page tool. So, if I want to view uh, essentially an overview of the entire book and scroll through it in this fashion that I can, or I can flip through it in individual pages. So again, wanted to touch on this because Tara and Maria specifically said that this was something uh, that benefited them in sharing the book, and, and I think it's a fantastic feature because it really lets you feel how the book is going to, to live in the hands of the reader. Um, so. This is the last feature that I wanted to show on our demo today. Again, I would love for you guys to submit questions if you have them. Um, I haven't looked at I'm sure we've had some that have, that have chimed in as we've gone through the actual book. Um, but feel free to type in those questions. That wraps up our demonstration of Virtual Publisher. Um, if you think of a question later on in the day, 
feel free to email us. Um, we'll, we'll send out some information. We'll send out a link to this. If you want to show this to a member on your team that wasn't able to make it today, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, definitely reach out to us. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and open it up to questions. If you have questions for me about the platform, if you have questions for Tara or Maria about their experience with the platform, go ahead, send us our way now, and, um, and we'll keep an eye out for those and start answering those questions. Great. Uh, great job, uh, Mitch. Uh, we actually have uh, several questions that come in. Um, first question would be, can you manage and split double page spreads inside Virtual Publisher? Fantastic question, um, and I can actually show that here now. So if you do have a double page spread, Virtual Publisher will manage that. You don't have to split that outside of the system. When you finalize the book plan, Virtual Publisher will actually split that for you. It'll rename the files, and then it will deliver that to your printer automatically. So you can see I have here a double page spread that's actually already been split by Virtual Publisher. So this exists uh, in my book plan. You can see that it's designed to be a double page spread. We've already split this one. I have another example here of a double page spread that hasn't been split yet. Um, so again, keep in mind when you finalize this and your book is actually delivered to printer, you don't have to manage those double page split double page spreads, excuse me, and split them automatic or split them manually. Virtual Publisher will do that for you within our platform. It's not something you have to manage through an external resource. Well, I think you actually answered two questions in one. Maybe we can go into a little more detail on this, but they're talking about can uh, naming conventions of PDF be customized based upon printer requirements? And the answer would be yes. Um, depending, on, so we work with a number of different printers, um, Keith, which which you can touch on. Um, but naming those individual files can be customized and can be managed uh, by by the publisher yourself. Um, so upon output, if your printer has specific requirements, Virtual Publisher will be able to take that into account. And when naming those files, we could manage that. Keith, is there anything you want to touch on regarding that feature? No, I think you covered it. Again, it's completely customizable. We can set up any name, naming convention that's required by your printer or multiple printers. We can deliver to, to, to multiple pr printers or split up publications for delivery. So we can name those in any way you like. All right. Uh, another good question. Can magazine viewer be accessed at any time during the production? It can. So with Magazine Viewer, um, which is, Keith is, is speaking about uh, the ability to, to view this as if it were an actual book, the book doesn't need to be finalized for you to view this. You can be at any point along your production cycle and you can access this. If there are pages that have yet to been finalized or placed, they'll display here, but you'll be able to see uh, that the artwork or content is missing. So at any point in production, you can use Magazine Viewer. You don't have to have your book finalized. This is uh, a live document that, that changes as, as you go and, and finalize production pages, uh, but it can be viewed at any time. It doesn't have to be part of the finalized book. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Can you create um, our own custom approval cycles within Virtual Publisher? Again, the answer would be yes. So if you're using a, an approval cycle within your team currently that works very well and, and you don't want to you know, cause interruption to that approval cycle or that process, we can recreate that approval cycle within virtual publishers. So if you have individuals that have to approve editorials in a certain order or something of that nature, we can do that here. Uh, approval cycles, as, as most everything within virtual publisher, are completely customizable um, and we can we create those to match the approval cycles you're using currently. Perfect. We've actually got several other questions. We're going to try to keep this to a maximum of 45 minutes. So if you do have a question that we don't get to, uh, we'll follow up uh, with you in writing. Um, uh, one question, I guess maybe we didn't touch on that. Uh, can you have multiple publications from multiple publishers? Absolutely. So yeah, as Tara and Maria talked um, early on in, in their Q&A, they're working right now with, I believe they said, 11 different titles. Um, so if you have separate titles that you're managing, those can all be managed within a single virtual publisher account. You wouldn't need to, to differentiate those. You're able to actually choose which title you're working within when you're planning your book. Um, and you can actually see up here in, in, in the upper right-hand screen, I only have one publication titled entered in, but you can see it allows me to choose a publication. So if you're working with several, you can easily manage those, and they can all be encompassed within one virtual publisher account. Okay. Uh, another good question really around delivery. Um, is Virtual Publisher optimized to communicate with Insight? Uh, and if you want, I'll answer that. Yes, absolutely. We, uh, we have several different delivery methods that we can use with Virtual Publisher. But we have many of our large 
uh, 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 printers that we work with that we do deliveries directly into Insight. So guys, we've been, uh, uh, let's see, uh, 50 minutes. So we tried to keep this to 45. We're about five minutes over. We have several other questions that we didn't get to, but we promise we'll get back to you in writing to answer those questions. So uh, I'll turn it back to you, Mitch. Okay. Guys, again, thank you so much. Tara and Maria specifically, thank you guys so much for popping on today and, and giving that insight toward how a publisher is actually using this. I think that's extremely beneficial for um, our attendees to be able to, to gain that insight. So thank you both for joining us today. Um, to our attendees, thank you as well. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us and, and learn more about this platform. If you do have questions, definitely reach out to us. We'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Um, we're happy to jump on individual calls and individual demonstrations. Uh, if you'd like a demonstration that's more tailored to the workflows you currently have in place for your publication, reach out and let us know. We're happy to sit down one-on-one -on -one and conduct that for you. So again, Tara Maria, thank you. All of our attendees, thank you so much. Uh, feel free to send us our questions. If you asked a question that we didn't get to today, we will get back to you in writing as quickly as possible. Um, enjoy the rest of your week, and thank you again, everyone, for joining.